All right, ladies and gentlemen, I want to welcome you to another episode of We Create Music. I am your host, B. Vaughn, and today we have an amazing guest, DJ and music producer, Dre Phantom. Peace, everybody. Dre Phantom in the building. What's up, brother? How you doing? Good. How are you, brother? I'm good in. to see you, man. I'm good. Good to see you again right. as well. I'm sure, man. Happy New Year. All that good Happy stuff. New Year. All that good stuff, man. Yeah. Yes, sir. So if you wouldn't mind, just for all of us, just walk us through how you got started in this whole music music world. Um, well, let's start um, growing up as a kid. Um, I was fortunate enough to have a family member. Uh, my father, actually, my dad, he's a DJ. Okay. So he was DJing for some years, um, almost a decade in uh, before I was born. Mm. And um, I just gravitated to it, you know what I mean? Seeing turntables, mixers, mm. records, you know. I'm like, wow, this is this is neat, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? And just more than just the appreciation of just the listening of music, but I was like at an early age, you know, before I was five, like really technical. Was like, wow, wow, what does this do? What does that do? So I was exposed to that, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And that uh, helped with my passion for music. So going forward, you know, um, probably into like maybe middle school, high school, you know, going to gigs with him when I was like, Thanks. you know, early teenager or like right before, like really uh, 13 teens, just, um, you know, being exposed to that light. You know, I've went to a few events and just based on like time constraints and curfew, mm -hmm. like, okay, you know, gotta go home, <laughs> you gotta go and, you home. Know, got home with mom and all that That's good right. stuff for auntie. So did all that. But when I was, you know, in my teens in high school, for sure, I was able to see like the in depth of it, how to mm. make control the party, set up, break down all that ins and outs, mm. and at the same time, um, learning how to play an instrument. You know, I was uh, classically trained um, in the public school system wow. through the band program, okay. and I stayed through that from like six to twelve. So all the way up to graduation. Nice. Um, I mean, I was really into that part of it, and just the appreciation level of it, just mm -hmm. classically learning how to play and knowing that you can kind of transcribe that into any other instrument. Wow. So, you know, just having the ins and outs of that and just having just a pure sense of um, band and mm -hmm. um, music, uh, not, uh, what is it, uh, theory, mm -hmm. if you will. And, um, and that helped out a lot, you know? So I was fortunate enough to have great band directors that were uh, very you know, well educated you know, came up through the same program mm -hmm. and had the experience of probably like playing a jazz band, marching mm -hmm. bands, like leadership in those, having those roles in those avenues. Okay. And then especially at the college, level, collegiate level, if you will, excuse me. And um, yeah, man, so um, from grade six to 12, all of it. And then at that time, you know, probably like into going into like my 10th grade year. Mm -hmm. So I got a grasp of like production. Mm -hmm. And that's when it hit me, it was like, you know, right like a year before that, I'm like, you know, being exposed to like the PCs, and I'm like, I know there's like musicians out here that are utilizing computers and mm -hmm. the studios and production and mm -hmm. trying to create. And I'm like, how can I take a PC that I have and use it for something like that just to try it out? Right. And I'm like, I never really found an answer. To, you know, there's different things and then this is the age of like windows you have mm -hmm. sound uh recorder, sound recorder. And, and things like that I'm like, right. ah. so i'm like we're getting there but that's not it so i'm thinking like multi-track and i did some research on my own just for you know for the hobby and fun mm -hmm. of it and it was not only until um i saw some things going on the internet and you know aol and all that good stuff so uh, you remember AOL? yeah man you know like on the tail end of night so we're like we're talking like early 2000s like mm -hmm. like getting into two, that like 99 ish yeah you know what i mean and i'm like man because you know at this point like i'm getting the inspiration you know mm -hmm. timbaland dr dre mm -hmm. swiss beats the neptunes mm -hmm. you know teddy riley you know you name it the hitman so i'm like uh like what can i do and then Soon enough, um, just in the area, in the neighborhood, you know, I met with some guys that um, we weren't friends at first, mm -hmm. but, you know, just met them at, at the bat. I'm like, and then, you know, we just started sharing interests and in, like what we're into and sports and music mm -hmm. and this, that, and the other. More or less like, oh, you know, we're close by. We can hang out type of thing. And, um, and one of the guys 
you know, I credit to him to this day. He actually introduced me to FL Studio. Mm. And I was looking at like Hammerhead and different applications like mm. that. And he was one of the ones like, hey man, like this is it. Like this is what I've been using. And like, you know, you're more than welcome to try it out. But mm -hmm. if this is gonna help, like which and I'm like, ah, okay. So, you know, some time had passed and, you know, I'm just observing like both of them. They're like collectively on their own making ah. beats. And I'm like, I'm hearing some fire. I'm like, things that, you know, you would imagine to do because at the same time, like, you know, I was thinking, oh, well, I wanna have like an NPC mm -hmm. and a Triton or a Core Trinity mm -hmm. or something like that. Oh, like, yeah, yeah, because yeah. those are the things that we're seeing. And, you mm -hmm. know, we're, we're like, at that time, this is pre social media. Mm -hmm. So for us to see it in the magazine or in an interview, the people right. were having like in studio interviews, like Rap City and all that mm -hmm. stuff, where they're like off site, you know, going somewhere and, you know, folks are having like this workstations, NPC, mm -hmm. Rollins, all that thing, you know. So I was like, ah. I can't really afford that. Like I'm living right. with balls there and they're not gonna buy that. You know, mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, no, we, that's what you have a saxophone for. Like, you know, so I was like, uh, that's what kind of got me like, you know what? To kind of help steer the idea around mm -hmm. and the goal, like, no, don't get frustrated. There's another way. Mm -hmm. So the computer came right and like the family computer was like, okay, I can do this on my downtime after I finish school, homework, all mm -hmm. that good stuff. So fast forward, you know, these guys are making, I'm like, man, so I instantly downloaded the demo and I was like, okay, I'm gonna rock with this and see how it goes. So from there I was using like, it was Fruit Loops actually, mm -hmm. version two or version mm -hmm. three, yeah, like version one was already out. And I was like, oh, and then version three I came, I was like, okay, perfect. I was using that, a few other applications like Hammerhead and a few mm -hmm. other ones. And I heard about Recycle at that time, I think. Yeah. That was out then. So yeah, I mean, and got in and like within a month or two at like that i was like this is it. like yeah. i've got to stick to this because it was a program that i was like okay it's got everything that you can do basically like mm -hmm. on a sequencer level and you can like record in and midi in mm -hmm. and then at that time i didn't have any midi controls like i wouldn't even heard of the form of like <laughs> yeah, a keyboard right. midi controller at that time because you know, I was so exposed to the fact that if you had many, it was more or less like connected through MIDI, mm -hmm. you know, and then you use it based on what the other devices mm -hmm. or whatever pieces of gear you're using. And then the audio outs and that will and right. modules and all that good stuff. So um, I was like, oh, okay. So I started making these and then I, I had the demo version. So mm -hmm. that was, you couldn't even save, save your it. sessions. Right. Like because you would have to export it to MP3. So I was like, okay, bet, you know. <laughs> I've got Winamp. I can always make a copy of it on mm. of a wave on my computer, and then right. um, at that time, I was fortunate enough to have like a CD burner, mm -hmm. tape deck. So mm -hmm. I was like, okay, I could bust it down to a tape or record to a CDR, and then we could play at the school the next day in the morning or something like yeah. that on the bus. So, and that was our way of like, okay, you know, folks were like bringing like their tapes with like mixtapes, mm -hmm. freestyles if they were recording mm -hmm. or um, if they had us up there making beats and all that good stuff. So at that point, you know. Um, in school, like a lot of folks were like into like doing the artist thing, you mm -hmm. know, rappers, singers, and all. So, you know, we would look at it as like an opportunity to kind of collaborate and get oh, together, yeah. you know. And that was like later, later down the line. But initially, like that was like my fir like first hands-on experience mm -hmm. with like that type of software integration with recording and production. Right. And um, I utilized it, and then I was like, I just stuck to it. And I mean, by the time, like, I gave, I gave myself like really four, four years solid. And I was like, okay, like, I'm decent. I'm okay. I'm, mm -hmm. I think I'm nice, nice. But mm -hmm. then I'm looking, referencing. I'm like, it's got to be better. You know what I mean? And <laughs> I know I'm what thinking, you mean. You know? And like, this mm -hmm. is like, oh man, like, I'm missing bass songs and stuff. Like, I've got it, but I gotta, you know on the craft a little bit. So I just started studying, man, mm -hmm. like studying the the greats and the ones that inspired me and just figured out like, okay, you know, how to craft my sound and mm -hmm. like be, cause I was looking forward to like more than just a hobby, like professional, because if I can have that talent, I mean, I could utilize that when I'm getting ready yeah. for college and yeah, make right. connections and that type of thing. So 
And I just stayed down and I just like reassured myself with the education aspect. Like, mm-hmm. okay, you know what? Before I get too overwhelmed with it, like I need to finish up school, <laughs> prioritize, prioritize because, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like it's, and you know, just take advantage because even if something comes up or an mm-hmm. opportunity that's like just gonna blow the doors off, I still wanna have that backbone. Mm. You know what I mean? And I know my parents and my family invested a lot of time in, mm-hmm. in this, you know, and my siblings is having like that perfect, you know, foundation, like mm-hmm. where we can just like really, not really perfect, but just work towards that goal. So we can like have just something to fall back on. So I just made that a priority, da, 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 finished school, got through college. And at the same time, I'm still making beats and I got better invested in my stuff. Like, you know, I'll work part time. Mm-hmm. So uh, now I'll, I'll you know, different opportunities. I'll get like a little mixer. Then I'll get like a sound module, a MIDI controller. That that was the mm-hmm. first piece of gear. I was like, if I get this controller and I saw like how it would do, I was like, this is it. Because right. it was just more or less like the same thing. Like, okay, with the computer controller, okay, well, NPC, Core Triton, like it's the mm-hmm. same difference, MIDI in, MIDI out, but just from different form of um, technology, if right. you will. So I was like, okay, cool. And I mean, I just stayed at it, man. And um, it, it was definitely um, a hungry hustle, if you will, because it's kind of part of like build your, mm-hmm. you know, repertoire and your connections mm-hmm. if you don't really know anyone like that. But it, it, but you have friends or like buddies that you kick it with mm-hmm. that are like passionate or doing music, too. Right. So that came hand in hand and started working with artists around um, locally and um, just just stayed at it and um, stayed into what was happening out there mm. and just utilizing like okay you know to further develop my thing mm-hmm. you know what i mean and that's just going back to like you know just growing with production and the sound and the right. you know with radio and just everything mm-hmm. because i just wasn't stuck on it like i i catch inspiration from all forms of production mm. you know outside of urban too but in hip hop, particularly because I hit focus on more, more hip hop, mm-hmm. um, you know, it's just you name it, man. Boom bap, trap, mm-hmm. bang, you know, you you name it, man. You know what I mean? Like okay. I could just mix it up, RZA, you know what I mean? All these guys. So I was like, to just grow with my, like my production style, mm-hmm. I've got to reinvest in it. Like just yeah. you know, grow with it. So that's where like the gear and all that. So I was like, just give myself time. And I was patient with it. I just u- used what I had. Mm-hmm. And um, I was working with a few artists and one of my best buddies, he um, is an MC. And he was going around the same time when I was just growing with the craft. Mm-hmm. And and then from that point, like I started then, like I think in 05, I was like, you know what? I got to get Pro Tools. So <laughs> I was able to grow with that now because I got to a point where like, it was just more or less like I'll meet myself in a roadblock. Mm-hmm. Like, okay, how can I record like these sessions and track out my mm-hmm. instrumentals you know what i mean because i just didn't like loops weren't just the thing like you had to have a like full you had song. to have a full you know right. back in the like years ago you might get away with it because the song was very constructive mm-hmm. you know through the vocals and verbally and you know just all together but right. now you know and even present a track or a record like you gotta have it fully constructed intro breakdowns you name it hooks all that, Hook that. mid sections so yeah. it's like i've gotta invest in myself again so I got um, Interface, Pro Tools, mm-hmm. got a computer dedicated for it. Then I was able to track out everything, record mm-hmm. things in, all that good stuff. So I just started creating, creating, mm-hmm. creating. And then I locked in, got an MPC, got a, a motif from Yamaha. Mm-hmm. And I was like, that, because, you know, I missed that part of the ride yeah. earlier on. Mm-hmm. So I was like, I've, I want to learn how I can like actually do that because you know i was just at that time technology was like mm-hmm. and i was like okay i gotta learn where i came from or where we came from to kind of know where we're going sure. so i was like okay i got the npc 1000 the yamaha motif and connect that up and i was able to utilize that with midi of some sort mm-hmm. but then i synced it through midi pro tools i was able to track you know so mm-hmm. i had instrumentals coming from like thank you from pc dolls mm-hmm. fl studio and I probably like this is around the time where they just changed the name because of the branding, and <laughs> right. um, and I was able to collect instruments from that point because like I had cousins from up top in New York in Brooklyn and like they were just going in like mm. they you know like my cousin fortunate enough was already like established and working and stuff so he had like a, a pre production studio okay. um, and he was telling me about it and kind of like remotely 
like training me on how to like use NPC and then mm-hmm. a couple of like trips and vacations like oh yeah this is, you know just showing me mm-hmm. when I was up there I was like that and then by the time you know I was able to get my own NPC I was like Psh, I got it now mm-hmm. I just got to learn how to like that's right you know set it up together and configure it for like my studio space mm-hmm. at home so did that and then you know um just started locking in with um other you know music friends and just having sessions mm-hmm. and working on their projects and all that you know so it was just helping me grow at the same time and you know nothing much was coming out of it and then I was like really getting to a point where like you know I'm out of school now mm-hmm. and like what can I do to kind of further this you know and really get my sound out and I was like okay I've got to think about different avenues now mm-hmm. because I was already like trying to connect with different A and R's, mm-hmm. different f- folks that are in the door at conferences, you know, the whole nine. And, you know, that part of the game is very competitive. Yes, it is. You know what I mean? So you think about the ones that are like coming up with you that mm-hmm. are like nice and just as good or even better. But then you've got a whole realm of folks that are like, what's up? Okay, cool. Like, mm-hmm. you know, they already got everything established and, you know, they're they are already submitting stuff mm-hmm. as long as you and you know they may have first divs you know because mm-hmm. of the relationships but there's a dynamic where i feel a lot of times people are like okay i know what i've got but mm-hmm. i know there's like an ace out there somewhere right. and there's a lot of artists that play that game right. it's like you know what it's not really about what they've done or who they are or what their name is mm-hmm. but um there's talent out there. So oh, I was yeah. like, okay, the internet game is coming up, mixtapes and all that. So mm-hmm. I was like, this is the perfect time to kind of like try to do that, but then stay with artists yeah. that you're coming up with. So I was like, you know what? I'm already kind of doing it. So I stayed at that and I was like, okay, cool. That'll help me as get fluent with engineering, mm-hmm. mixing, recording, mm-hmm. tracking out, production, integrating all that stuff in and you know, that whole package. Mm. And at that time, I wasn't really working with too many songwriters, but more MCs. And then the songwriting came like along the way right, later right. on. Um, so yeah, and then um, that got real competitive. And I was like, ah, oh, man, like something's gotta give, you know what <laughs> I mean? And I was like, you know, I don't really want to give it up because mm-hmm. you know, once you stop, you know, it's like, it's hard to kind of like mm-hmm. recertify that energy to get it all back intact again. So at that point, I was like looking at different avenues. You know, I could work with artists, but then I could work on movies. I could mm-hmm. work on things with TV. I could work um, on independent projects. Mm-hmm. I could do beats for um, infomercials or right. real estate agents. You know, right. the list goes on and on. So wherever music is, there's a destination. You know sure. what I mean? You know, what's so crazy about that is most people don't think about that, though. Yeah. You know, they're so yeah. artists focused mm-hmm. and artist driven it's like i need to get my actual song to an artist and right. then that's how i'm going to make it right. but people don't realize there's a whole nother space that lives out out there that you can you know that you can live in right. and they don't even realize they don't even realize it yeah and even if like um that part of it and even the collaborating aspect of mm. it you know i mean a lot of producers got noticed through collaborations, just collaborations and right. doing their thing. And like, you know what? Oh, I would be nice if I get a hold of this mm-hmm. guy or girl and work with them. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And, you know, the list, I mean, every major producer that you can think of has maybe done it or has at least tried or is probably going to do it. You know, from Dr. Dre, they work mm-hmm. with Focus and, um, you know, different songwriters and things sure. like that, and Scott Storch and Mailman and all mm-hmm. these guys. And these guys are very professional on their own. You know, Jermaine Dupree, Brian Michael Cox. Right. Uh, you know, so it's more or less like I look at it like Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis. Like mm-hmm. they were always together, but then you have other producers like, you know what? If I get Timberland and Scott Storch, oh well, man, we can make this Justin Timberland thing fire. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? So, then, you know, the list goes True, on. And they you did. Know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. And then just like I'm here. And the organized noise and, you know, getting mm-hmm. those ideas and just one melting pot. And when I figured that, you know, that space is like very good because mm-hmm. people was like, oh, like, you know, just just share. Because I, I feel like a lot of times creators are like, you know, it's my art. I'm 
it's, you know, it's mine. It's, yeah, it's, it's sanctified. It's exactly. sacred and holy to, only to me. Exactly. And I don't want anybody else to kind of infiltrate right. you know, this, this arena. And, and the good thing about it is that like when you are with that mm -hmm. for a while and then you kind of like, you know what? I can kind of like dig in like, hey, just check out what other... And then, you know, that's how conversations get started. That's mm -hmm. how, you know, and like when you really look at like jam sessions, you know, people just prints the roots and all these people mm -hmm. like RIP, you know, we're together for these like just random, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Let's call it sessions. It's like, hey, you never know. And like you never know. great songs have come out of it. Yep. Just like, you know, a conversation like, well, you know, you know, a good song can come out of that, you know, based on topic. So just stayed with that, man. And, you know, it was didn't really get too much um look as far as like major placements, so mm. that's when I was like, okay, I've got to tap into the digital thing mm. and get with that. And um, I was working with some independent artists, and they're doing their thing. And I was like, okay, I'm gonna really start looking at the sync and film mm -hmm. stuff. And I took like maybe six months to a year mm. and just started doing like hard ground research. Like I was still creating, mm -hmm. but then I was like reserving time to like do that part and got on the internet, you know, just stayed down, library visits, just like, how can I really get into that? Because, you know, at this point, like a lot of great movies were being produced, mm -hmm. but a lot of composers were being recognized and I'm seeing that and they probably were along the line, but then when I was paying attention to like, you know, those um, composers and writers being like recognized for their mm -hmm. work on Spider-Man and this, like Hans, and like, so I knew that that was like an area that you can tap into because Swiss Beat, Stop the Dre, they worked on mm -hmm. those films like Triple X and Training Day, you know. Mm -hmm. And it was like, there's an avenue for that because when they're not working with artists, that's what they're working there's on. There's other things you that know, they do. You know, like when RZA is not working on like Wu Tang affiliates, right. like he's working on movies, movies. for Forrest Whitaker, you know, the list goes on and on. And Quentin Terrence, I was like, I've got to get in that. Mm -hmm. And um, I just like, you know, just got in and started going on, you know, different. Um, blogs and you know video you know youtube videos I'm like, okay cool then now it's like i've just got to apply it so with the networking involved i was mm -hmm. like i'll still try to you know uh make some ways to like send beats out or tracks out to artists that were looking you know the social media is out by now right. so twitter is going on and like okay cool so you've got that but then i was like that's competitive so um at the same time st you know still slow and then i found an opportunity for um, a licensing uh, mm. placement with um, the art of rap. The movie okay. was being yeah, yeah. done, and there was an, like an open pool for artists and producers, all different creators, mm -hmm. to um, you know be involved and to audition for it mm. to see if they kind of meet the criteria with submissions and stuff. So right. I saw that through like a LinkedIn post, and I'm like, that's odd. Like yeah. I had created my LinkedIn profile like maybe about a year and a half before mm -hmm. that. And I'm like, wow, like, let me see what's up. So I did my research on that and it wasn't nothing, you know, Fugazi or Bogus. <laughs> Fugazi. <you know? laughs> and I was like, okay, cool. And then right. I stayed in contact with um, the um, contact that provided like that post mm. from the company. And um, we stayed in contact and um, he got to hear some of my tracks and everything. He's like, cool. And then he mm. told me what they were doing, like what was the deal behind it. And um, it wasn't nothing significant at the time, but it was definitely something that I could have mm -hmm. earned some residuals, you know, if, um, you know, things were definitely looking mm -hmm. good on that end. And I was like, you know what? That's a start. You know what I mean? Like, you gotta start somewhere. You gotta start somewhere. That's and right. I was like, for an international company, to like reach out and I'm mm -hmm. like, okay, I know it's more than just decent. Like I can actually like do mm -hmm. this, you know? So that kept the motivation going. And so I think they, we did like four or five tracks and they were available. Like as soon as they got approved on the app and I was on there with wow. different producers from all over the world and other tracks that were actually like original songs, those instrumentals got licensed, like some of the ones mm -hmm. that you've heard in the film. And I was like, okay, cool. This is dope. This is real, real dope. And I was like, there's more. There's more. <laughs> because that's one platform and that, the digital platform was growing. Right. So 
I was able to use that as leverage somewhat, but then I'm still researching for like the mm -hmm. film and TV things. And I was like, okay, this is what I've got to do. Uh, mm -hmm. Like I've got to take the tracks that I've got and curate them and construct them like I'm doing it for TV. Right. And that's a whole different process. Mm -hmm. Like you. So I want to talk, let's mm -hmm. talk about, let's take a moment and talk yeah, about what that process is and what it looks like and mm -hmm. how can, you know, our people take advantage of that process uh, even for themselves yeah, to kind of sure. get into into film and TV and sync licensing and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so let's let's talk about that. You okay. know, so you said that you started off doing a lot of research. What mm -hmm. what were some of the areas that you were looking at, and then how did you kind of identify places to start submitting submitting music to? So um, yeah, so the answer to that I started with like doing research with different like companies, mm -hmm. or at least trying to find out companies like that actually did that mm. and that form of thing. So I was just coming with an open mind, open ears, and because I wasn't really exposed to that. Mm -hmm. And um, so, you know, the internet utilized that a lot and connected with some other producers that some were established, some were mm -hmm. not. And as far as like producing for acts that were signed to okay. major labels and all that good stuff. So, it was really um, informational when I found out that you can connect with different music supervisors. Mm -hmm. You know, that's a position that they mm -hmm. hold so that they can audition music, at least listen, you know, give their feedback and thoughts of what they would mm -hmm. like to see and their projects that they're working on. So, and then there you have licensing libraries and licensing companies. And I'm like, whoo, we're getting somewhere. Mm -hmm. And then it got to a point when I had a conversation with uh, somebody and um, I mean, this guy, like he's doing a lot. And I'm like, you're doing that too? Mm. And he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and I'm like, so like, like I'm not really trying to like invade or just mm -hmm. be like, you know, too front with it, but am I like approaching it the right way? And he's like, yeah, you've got to get with those companies and like get your music right mm -hmm. first off, you know, and, you know, just see how it goes because yeah. it is competitive and you're going to hear a lot of no's, but you might hear some yeses and mm -hmm. give it a shot. So I gave it a shot and, you know, I mean, I didn't get much info, like direct info. It was like, who I need to call. Or, so it was just really my own research, man. Mm. Like online, just reading about like, different um taxi broad mm -hmm. jam and then going in depth with like music music licensing deals excuse mm -hmm. me and i'm like okay cool like so if i kind of do that at least get that started at least try to find out who i can submit to then i can try to at least find out who i can personally connect mm -hmm. with on a music supervision level right and i was like okay cool so um i got into like some like a few like minor classes online um that you know different producers mm. have online um you know I, I fuse a personal friends of mine and um some that i just re got referred so i was like okay cool mm -hmm. as long as i applied that then um we can get a step forward then i was like at the same time i've got to develop my sound like make sure that i've got quality ready music mm -hmm. for this type of avenue because you've got to be ready like the right. sound's yeah. got to be there or else like they're just going on to the next thing, you know? Mm -hmm. So did that and um, I was like, okay, cool. Um, got music ready, submitted. Mm -hmm. And then like, I was getting some good feedback, but then something was was wrong. Like, and I'm just like, what's the matter? Like, right. Oh, like the quality's there, but it's not really formatted for that type of space. Mm -hmm. And I was like, more homework again. Right. So I just sat back and I was like, okay, let me study and how this is done. And then like doing the same time the research, I was like looking at different um, television shows, series, mm -hmm. um, premiere cable series. And mm -hmm. I was like, okay, I see like how they're doing it. But I was like, oh, okay. And then one particular um, supervisor was like, yeah, nice, but you've got to shorten them. Like, mm -hmm. I'm not sure if, like, he's like, I'm not sure if anybody has told you that, but it's not, but you've just got to shorten it just a little bit if you mm -hmm. can. And I was like, 
good advice. I appreciate that. And he was like, once you do that and apply that, you're good to go. Mm -hmm. So then I was able to like structure my deliverables, what they call like the optional version. So mm -hmm. you've got it. That's another thing. Like you, when you're composing and producing, you've got to like make sure like you're streamlining them so that you know like you have different versions mm. because you just can't send like an artist you know particular artist you can say like, here's, one, here's a track oh here's 50 beats right. here's 20 beats there's right. 10 you know but them it's like oh like we need to have like five different versions for each instrumental wow yeah and i was like i gotta develop a system because i don't want to get burnt out mm. and i was like okay i've got those tracks so I was like, if I can create like five instrumentals and for example, mm -hmm. and like just have the ideas out, I can always go back and create the deliverables because it's already there. Like mm -hmm. you got your different versions for your like uh, narrative and your drum mm -hmm. bass and your percussion only or no percussion, no drums only. So I was like, okay, I've got to be prepared for that. Mm -hmm. And then when I'm doing those, after I do all those, I can get them mixed you know get them you know and even just level if you're not really good but just get a great mix on it yeah ready for submitting and then i was like boom oh, i got it mm. and then after that you know i just stayed down and i was doing a lot of producing mm. more than like i just wanted to have a, like a good amount that i can just audition right because when i'm getting like hitbacks and responses from different supervisors or publishers mm -hmm. or um, different companies that want to license I've got to have like, you know, all of my mm -hmm. forms of music ready. Ready. And um, did that. And um, man, God is good. I mean, I was able to see yeah. my first film and TV placement in 2014. Mm. And I was like, amazing. Wow. And then like some time had passed in 2015, um, I was getting ready to go on the road for a wedding and like I started getting notifications from ASCAP with like cue sheets and stuff. And I'm like, no, nah, no way. Mm. And I was like, what's this? Cause I was like, I didn't work with anybody recently. Like I'm thinking right. like a, a placement, you know, with an artist and mm -hmm. wherever, with, you know, with another producer that may have hit TV or film. Mm -hmm. I was like, okay. So I like went on, I was like, I got to my computer and I was like, what's going on? Cause I'm, I'm, I'm like, I'm getting ready to call them. And I'm like, let me see what's up first. <laughs> and then I went in, saw the cue sheet information. I was like, oh man, like NFL Network, CBS, NFL. Mm -hmm. I'm like, whoo. I was like, something's working here. Mm. And then I was like, because at that time, you know, like just having discussions with different um, people that I knew that were working on music, like mm -hmm. they were really getting like too many calls or notifications like if they got anything out there because publishers like this is what they do like yeah. there's so much going in and out mm -hmm. and i'm like okay so if we can expect that then i was like i might be able to track it that way mm -hmm. you know if they're probably late to just saying okay congrats, Say, hey, we, or, right you know that type right of you know you're gonna get a cue sheet right 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 so. because this is what happened usually yeah. they'll know but they're dealing with so much so i was like okay and then i got introduced with um different tools online that would help you track it, mm. you know? So if you just have an account, like you can have your music, you know, being scanned for all that stuff. Mm -hmm. So to kind of help with, you know, my uh, PRO, getting all the info mm -hmm. so that if they miss anything, I can present it in a right. good deal. So right. that helps. And um, I was like, whoo. And then like just time and time. And then I was like, hold on, like, man, some, this is amazing. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, okay. I got to stick to it because mm -hmm. if I'm, I'm getting that type of response and I'm like, if I stick to it like this, if I just keep creating and just being on point with that right. and not really paying attention to too much of like the reception, the success mm -hmm. that it's getting then, you know, early on, then I, I can really um, do it. And I just wanted to stay motivated and not get to it because, you know, when you see that and I'm like, I'm very humble mm -hmm. and very late, but I can mm -hmm. more or less reserved and, you know, I didn't really want to be with the hype, like, oh, I've got something here, there, there. Mm -hmm. But the consistency was everything because, you know, as a producer, as a creative or a songwriter, you know, your your consistency is everything. Your only everything. good is your last project mm -hmm. or your last yeah, yeah. song or something that you wrote. So, you know, just to keep the mind going, too, mm -hmm. because I'm still developing. I'm getting more into musicality, playing mm -hmm. keys and chords. So I was like, man, I got because, I mean, 
the young ones coming up, man. You know, or everybody else. They're like, oh, that's right. They're grabbing musicians, and you know, they're they're everyone's jamming now. You know what I mean? So, um, just, so I want to touch on something that you said. Though. Yeah, go ahead. So you said that uh, you know you received a lot of, or people are going to receive a lot of no's versus a lot of yeses. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right. And yeah, I yeah. think even in this kind of this music industry as a whole, people have to develop that. Yeah. That it, skin. Yeah, it does. That's in tough order skin to, is, yep, to it, it take those no's because as soon as they take a no, it's like, yeah. Well, maybe this is not for me. Right. Right. You or know? like, oh well. I don't really think they like their, you know, your mm -hmm. music and all that. And I was like, mm -mm. like at this point, you know, it was just confirmation from people that I knew directly and others mm -hmm. like outside of my circle. I was like, yeah, you know, you're nice. You know, mm -hmm. Just stay, just keep staying at it. And you know, and I was like, it's not really that hard. You know, mm -hmm. just you just have something that can really connect right. with people, and you never know where it can go. Right. And I was always connecting this because, you know, DJing, like I was DJing like mm -hmm. regularly, you know what I mean, till this day. And that was something that kept me grounded because if nothing else worked, mm -hmm. you know, I know that like me being as a DJ was definitely gonna, you know, yeah. hold me down, like just at least for the passion part of like, you know, mm -hmm. having that interest, that strong interest in mm -hmm. music. But um, yeah, I heard a lot of no's, man. I mean, I got I didn't get picked up for a lot of things. That Shoot, he heard a lot of yeses though. Yeah, like, afterwards, like man. don't let him sit here and, and be like, <laughs> I received a lot of no's. Yeah, no, but, he received a lot of yeses. Like, but, you know, and, the and that helps, that helps places. you because that 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 motivation mm -hmm. is like, you know what, like just you know, just develop your craft even yeah. more and yeah. um, just stay at it. And um, once I, I I started getting those yeses or that mm -hmm. type of reception, I was like, okay, I just gotta stay at it because i mean mm. that's something that's growing too i mean there's you never know where anything can end up because right. folks are listening a lot more now and you know on an international spectrum we've got streaming now mm. i mean it, everything's been worldwide man so you know i gave i gave um i give all thanks to the creator for that and just right. being able to you know have him utilize me in that aspect where i was like okay you can still move forward in in any light mm. just you know develop something that you can really going within your lane you know what i mean and that lane has always been there mm. you know and um and know, it's still there and it's still there right it's people just there. gotta decide if they want to take advantage of it or not and research right. and do the work right that it requires to you know operate in that in that space mm -hmm. but it is is there yeah like like i told you he, he's Dre is super humble you know? but <laughs> if you go to his instagram you will see all of the different placements that he has and all the different shows that he's worked on and i mean i don't know it, it, just go look and yeah. you'll get a chance to see i mean we could run some of them down like keeping up with the kardashians and That's married cool. to medicine and uh you know the ncaa and e and nbc and bet and like there's a whole bunch yeah. right i mean you and clint are kind of like the only two people that i know man. that got like a million that's my brother sync man. placements yeah that man that man it's, is clint is that guy well man. you clint and beat buster I heard about him uh, too. He's the beat buses yeah. in uh, Toronto. He's oh, okay. I think, okay. Be, I think he's that's what's up. That's my yeah. hometown, matter of yeah. fact. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah I think he's in. Um, I think he's in Toronto. Mm -hmm. Dude makes amazing music. But yeah. from between you three, it's like I think y'all just all the ones who make a lot of music. Word. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> definitely, man. Um, Clint, he. I mean, we connected yeah, um, yeah. just recently. He's you know phenomenal dude, mm -hmm. man. He's got a good thing going on and. His platform is mm -hmm. a, is a great use resources. Oh, if, yeah. if producers, if you're out there, check that out. Like you definitely yeah, he got that thing to roll the template. Yeah, and um, yeah. you know, and um, we connected earlier. Like when I started getting something, mm -hmm. like man, you know, I wanted to connect with some other guys or or girls, even you know, ladies that were in that um, mm -hmm. realm. And um, he was definitely um, you know out there because it's I mean, YouTube. Mm -hmm. I mean, he was out there on social media, and I found mm -hmm. I was like, man. You know, I was like, man, you got a lot of things going on. And mm -hmm. I saw that he was working with other artists too. And that was another thing. That's where, how I ran into him. You know, yeah. And, um, you know, online. And, you know, we started um, sending like emails and mm -hmm. DMs back and forth like a couple of years after that. And I was like, you know, let's let's connect sometime, man, because I'm working on this stuff. And he's like, yeah, yeah. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, he's, man, he stays busy. And, uh, you know, he was working on some stuff with Tamar Braxton and yeah. all that good stuff. But, yeah, I mean, to, you know, say that point, I mean, I wanted to utilize that because it's like it's mm -hmm. leverage for me 
to work with artists now if they hear or see right. like no anything as far as traction being done with that and i was like that's something from my resume mm -hmm. and um you know and it, and it, it's and it's been working somewhat but i was like you know let me stay down with this and kind of like get that in and mm -hmm. you know things will things will definitely pick up and i just look at it from you know the, the green side of the the tunnel, man. That's you right. know what I mean? You just stay at it and you just put your faith forward. I mean, That's things right. will happen. You know what I mean? You got that right. And I started, you know, meeting some other producers, with, you know, with, you know, in that. And um, Clinton and I are good friends. Um, other producers that are, you know, licensing music, you know, we didn't meet like in person, but mm -hmm. we met online first and then we met in person later, you know, that type of thing. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, man, it's a growing community because a lot of producers are finding that as another like revenue revenue because you know because seeing people gonna pay you yes yes and you, and that's one thing <laughs> they gonna like, pay you the money you know in you, the business yeah. you know we, we we see that drawback where um you know producers not getting paid mm -hmm. on time or they they you know they've got stuff out there and you know in that in that area you got to make sure that you're getting paid too because if mm -hmm. you're not keeping up with your work and what's out there yeah. you know you can miss a few things. I mean, but they're not trying to come to you and like, oh, you got you got beats. No, you know, no, no, can no, I no, get, no, uh, no. Can I get this for my film? No, I mean, for like three <laughs> for a hundred. Right, right, right. I right. mean, they they're no, not no, coming no. with the same mentality. I mean, they have a a, a budget. Right. I mean, they're and, doing and a, a TV show and right. a film, and they got mm -hmm. a budget. And so they, they got, got a budget, that, and they've got music. lines that they've got to go along, yeah. you know, for legal purposes. Sure. And it's like, you know, you know that they're going to look at because at the end of the day. Which movie production studio or right. you know production company that's working with television series mm -hmm. wants you know their um, their face on their brand you know out there because of something like that right. you know what I mean like that ha you know and usually it's it's rectified you mm -hmm. know what I mean because once you have representation or even if you have those proper documentation like okay this is what I worked on here's the cue mm -hmm. sheets here's the reports here's the conversations um the correspondences from emails you know you're, you're more mm -hmm. you know what I mean but you exactly. still you still want to copyright your work though. oh yeah of course. definitely definitely you know yeah, of course definitely you know you definitely want to do that but um but yeah man um and you know I've, I've been doing that for some years now I'm you know Sorry. going going trying to you know make it a whole decade out of it mm -hmm. but you know we about we about halfway there and some That's change up, now man, man you know yeah. and like i said man i give the most high all, all the credit due because um you know at that time i just you know had to lock in mm -hmm. and he's like yo just, just yeah. i wasn't on these beats and getting them right and making you know feeling and everything and when i started putting more feeling into it mm. like it's because you know everything is like feeling now you know it's like be, be, mm -hmm. you know but if somebody can feel it and it's like yo run that back like if they're looking for some of that like from what i heard music supervisors will look for a certain feel yeah that can be communicated mm -hmm. through the song that fits the scene that exactly. they're looking for that and that's all that's all it is that's okay. a, a lot of it majority of it is that you know mm -hmm. what i mean like if you're working with like different particular scenes that mm -hmm. are action-packed or filled with drama mm -hmm. you know they want that suspense they want that intensity mm. you know what i mean like that tense music that's going to mm -hmm. help them drive the scene and once they have something that could drive the scene then there's a possibility yeah. there's a strong possibility and um and then that's another thing like you know I'm, i came up as a hip-hop producer mm. hip-hop and rap and i always like r b like r b was always smooth and but coming up like that was my thing. And, then, you know, later mm -hmm. on, I was like, you know, I want to get into that when I can have the ability to play a little bit more mm -hmm. or collaborate with different um, keyboardists mm -hmm. or piano players or even different producers that mm -hmm. are great with keys. I always respected that. Yeah, you know me too. I mean? <laughs> Shout out to all you guys who are there who are definitely, super fluent in, definitely. in, in keys. <laughs> Man. You know, that goes a long way. Yeah. I mean, those, those guys can be in the game until, until you know, 70, forever. 80 years old forever. You know, right. you know, Lord knows. But, um, yeah, and then, you know, I was like, Psh. when I applied that to music that I was working on for mm -hmm. TV, then I started seeing that different scenes. I was mm -hmm. like, it's not a thing just about the energetic, you know, the sports right. driven stuff, like, you know, relationship driven scenes, you know, um, you know, it could be like someone having a walk in the park or, mm -hmm. you know, two homies, mm -hmm. you know, having a conversation and it's, you know, like a organic hip hop beat or, you know, something soulful mm -hmm. more or less, you know? So, you know, I was like, you know, just make it relatable. You know? well, now, even speaking of, even speaking of that, when mm -hmm. you think about the album that you came up with, mm -hmm. it sounds 
sounds like that. Right? Oh, I had a chance to listen to it, the, the Malibu Pier collection. collection. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Thank you. And Thank so you. It, I sounds, it. it sounds that kind of like that soulful, organic. I mean, I, I, you got to tell me how you describe describe the album. I can sit here and say it sounds like a, a, a hip hop, lo fi, chill type of organic music, but yeah, the, um, organically, that's what it came out to mm-hmm. be. Um, mm-hmm. The way I approached it, you know, was um, it was my fourth project in um, as far as the intermission, in, in, excuse me, instrumental series that I've been doing because mm-hmm. um, that's another thing that I wanted to tap into, you know, just have my alternative right. projects. Right. And um, Cause you had Chromosphere came up before. Right, right before that, right. and that came yeah. out on Black Friday and okay. I released, um, if you haven't checked it out, got uh, everyone, I checked, uh, released it, let's see, a week after Black Friday. Okay. So it has a remix and two bonus cuts that I threw in there, mm. you know, for all the support. Mm-hmm. I mean, I've been getting a lot of reports and hitbacks from, man, People across the country, mm. you know, um, across the world, even. So yeah, I just wanted to give that back, you know, given season. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, um, you know, before that, like my first one in August that I released was uh, "Dark Nights, Bright of Stars." Okay. But uh, for this approach, you know, um, on the Malibu Pier, I was like, you know, just want to let laid back feel. Um, mm-hmm. I was in Cali for a little bit, ah, okay. you know, just on some, you know, relaxing vibes mm-hmm. and not really trying to work or anything, but I had my uh, NPC with me and, you know, I was like, you know what, like, I want to, I just want to rock out, but mm-hmm. if anything comes out of it, I just want to make it like a project where it's like, I could just put it in, bump mm-hmm. it like a mixtape and just ride out, yeah. you know what I mean? And um, Chromosphere was different because I wanted to hit them with like, some banging beats, mm. like some just some that just blow your speakers, mm-hmm. and I got that. You know what I mean? Shout out to my boy AJ for mixing the whole project. AJ with me. on the buttons. Yeah, 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 I connected with him on that, and he got it. He got it all the way right for me, and um, and uh, we put that out. And afterwards, um, you know, with that, yeah, I just wanted that laid back feel. You know what I mean? Because you know, I came up on the hip hop scene, yeah. and I just wanted something that people could vibe to, and just mm-hmm. you know, whether it be getting ready for work, driving to right. work. Um, coming home and enjoying the weekend mm-hmm. or just something that they could play when they just wanted some at ease. You know yeah, I mean? it has that feel. Too. Right, right, right. Like, it, it definitely has that feel where you can just chill and relax and be laid back and just enjoy some really good hip hop, you know, music. And it, it just has that, yeah. just has that feel and pushing that and that moving that <laughs> mindset. And, um, you know, just for like producing it, I mean, I didn't really want to like book any studio time mm-hmm. or anything. I just, where I was at at that point where I had an idea, mm. I was just like, yo, because I wait, was mobile wait, at that point. Wait, you lugged your big old NBC with No, no, no. Oh, it was okay. like the, the mini one, like oh, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. I think the live, the NBC live. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, before, you know, I went out, um, I loaded it up. I had a hard drive that was already pre installed, so I loaded mm. it up with some sounds. I was like, okay, I'm just going to take a gamble here. Mm. You, know, you know, rush a roulette with it. I'm like, Phew. Just be random like a ma- magician with uh, And then it. whatever popped up. And then you. I'm just going to use these sounds and boom. Wow. And I already learned. I had it for a little while already. So I had learned like how to do key groups and play keys on mm-hmm. pads. And I was like, let me challenge okay. myself. You know what I mean? And I wasn't really trying to do it, you know, for a cat mm-hmm. or anything like that. But for this particular project, I was like, if what comes out of it, sure, I'm make not? it all right. through that box. And... Sure enough, I was able to sequence it all, man, top to bottom. Wow. What you hear is how I made it, mm. like in real time. And like different, you know, different excursions, you know, mm. I mean, I was doing stuff in the hotel room, um, Uber. Um, the last track I made was when I was about to board my flight, heading back home on my LAX. Wow. And, you know, I mean, I just rocked out. I didn't put no time constraints. Mm. I didn't even wear a watch at that time, you know, like I just wanted to just to be out mm-hmm. there and um the beat malibu i mm-hmm. went to malibu um i spent the whole day out there nice. and i was on the beach had some lunch and i was like vibes you know what i mean mm-hmm. and that's where the idea like for the, the cover and for mm-hmm. the like the vibe of the energy like for the project it came from like okay i'm gonna name it that because i want to approach it like that like mm-hmm. the beach scene mm-hmm. you know what I mean? like the, that whole environment is like relax and wind down you know and Okay, cool. Because you know California as a, as a whole, it gives you that. You know, and that was my like one of my first times out there. So okay. I was like, you know what? 
Mm. And then, you know, like different like, things. I was like, I just got inspired. Like mm. every day I was out there, like not, I, I'm actually, there's more tracks that I make. Uh -uh. I might throw out a, you know, Malibu Pure stuff. Collection part two, line you know, too. You know what I mean? Yes. But I've got, I've got, man, if you, if you guys like what you guys hear right now, I've got some others, but, uh -oh. but, um, but yeah, and I just took the best ones that I felt that were molded and, um, and yeah, man, I, I, I enjoyed it, you know, the whole way through and, mm -hmm. I was like, okay, I've got to get it right and cleaned up. So took all the sessions, bounced them out, you know, mixed it, you know, put a soft mix on it. And, and that's another thing. I wasn't really trying to go too, mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. you know, compressed with the sound or too um Because you don't want to make it feel. Anything. Yeah, I just wanted yeah. to have something organic. Like if you heard it on the radio, mm -hmm. record, you know what I mean? Or if you borrowed a tape from somebody, you know, mm -hmm. just like how we're just passing around and sharing mm -hmm. some music from back in the day. And um, took it and then... You know, locked in the studio, tracked it out, and I was like, "Man, this is gonna blend so good." Mm. And then I sequenced it out, and I was like, "Boom!" And I was like, "If everything goes well with Chromosphere and everyone likes that," I was like, "They're Year's. gonna love New Year's." They're gonna I love like, this one. Yeah, New Year's. Yeah, I was gonna rock that, and yeah. I was like, "Bet!" So got everything lined up, and I didn't, you know, I was kind of mum about it, and didn't tell much, much people about it. Cool. I looked at how Chrome mm -hmm. was going. I was like, cool. I must just wind <laughs> it on down, get them ready right. for 2020 because uh, we're going to do some more yeah, this year for sure, man. Well, I can't wait to, to hear what you got, what you got uh, coming, coming up next. So, so let me ask you, mm -hmm. so what would be your one biggest piece of advice for anybody that's coming into this music industry? Oh, man, patience. Mm. Patience, you know, patience is a virtue. Um, true, patience is a, patience is a fruit of spirit too. Yeah, man. Yeah, it's true virtue, and, and it goes a long yes. way. But with that, you know, mm -hmm. I would just have that in the main umbrella. But um, develop your craft, invest in your sound. Mm -hmm. um, you know, wherever you can, take opportunity. You know what I mean? Everything is not expensive out there. Sounds you can get those. You know. From Splice from, from sounds.com, right? You know, yeah. and you can take opportunity of different sales that are out there. You know, all these holiday seasons. I mean, plugins were everywhere, you know, everywhere, everywhere. right? You, you know, plug in alliance, yeah. .com. You I, can, they got free ones, they got stuff you can get for 99 cents all the right. way up to you whatever know? the price is. And um, build relationships with these companies that are selling these plugins mm -hmm. and sounds and different pieces of gear, you know, and mm -hmm. um, research, man. Like, if I feel that, like when you are trying to tap into something that okay this is what, try to find out what you can use mm -hmm. to help you further that even more mm -hmm. you know what i mean and and push the envelope there's so much you can do with these dolls now yeah. that man like you and me both probably we haven't even touched yet we haven't even but it's it's out there right you know what i mean and just educate yourself on that mm -hmm. and you know everything will come into place you know i, I think that once you you know just own your craft Stay at it and just learn from it. You know, you're gonna take L's, but those L's could be lessons. You got, they gotta be lessons. They gotta, be. you gotta you know, learn I mean, from it. You gotta learn from you it. You can't get defeated by when you take those L's like that. Yeah. I mean, and it's gonna help you in the long run. And it's gonna help the the end right. the person or the homie or the homegirl that's coming up. You know, before right. us, you know, right. or after. So, yeah. you know, and and um and that's really it, man. Just study your craft and um tools, tools yeah. of the trade. I think tools are everything. Like mm -hmm. every producer has their weaponry or tools that mm -hmm. they want to go in on. And we don't really have to have the same type of armor these days. You know what I mean? We don't. We don't. And, 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 the, and the good thing about it is that, you know, we can get your laptops and, right. you know, we have, we have different in, introspective tools out here that are like doing enormous things, man. Right. I mean, so just, you know, and just stay at it and, and just, uh, be proficient and um mm. and and collaborate, collaborate and at least don't be too close in with the music because when it's ready and it's ready to be shared, just share it, man. Mm. You know, a lot of times um, you know, my finest compliments have been from just sharing it, yeah. Not even like looking up for a dollar or anything, just sharing it. Mm. And once people like appreciate what you're doing, it's gonna come. It's Eventually. gonna come. That's right. It's definitely gonna come. It's man. Definitely gonna come. Well, man, tell people where they can find you. Oh man, um, everyone, y'all can find me on Instagram at Dre Phantom, all one word, D-R-E-P-H-A-N-T-O-M. Uh, Twitter, same thing, at Dre Phantom. And uh, look out for some more music. Um, mm -hmm. we, I got I got some stuff on the way. That's, That's right. what I'm gonna say. 
That's right, my man. Well, my man, it's a pleasure having you on the show today. Man. Likewise, brother. Really I appreciate, appreciate the opportunity. Enjoying the conversation and learning more about you, brother. Oh, for sure, for sure. Yeah, man. Likewise, man. Ladies and gentlemen, we thank you very much for tuning in to another episode of We Create Music TV. You can always catch us every Thursday at 7 p.m. Y'all have a great, wonderful day. Once again, it's my man, Dre Phantom. Peace. Peace, y'all. We're out.